show you and identify with the four main components of the lithomatic floor to go through some basic disassembly procedures, to do some troubleshooting for the unit, and also to reassemble the complete lithomatic floor unit. First off, we can identify with the four main components. First is the carrier, which is the adapter for our lift truck. Second is the entire unit, which contains all four of the housings. Third are the lithomatic individual four clamping mechanisms. And lastly is the spider, which lies on each side of all four of the clamping mechanisms. Now, before we can go through any dis disassembly procedures, we need to obtain the following pieces of information. First is the disassembly procedure guide. Also, we will need a parts list and schematic, a combination of those two pieces of information. Uh, and these can be obtained from our sales manual or by contacting any of our lithomatic sales offices. Now that we have identified with the unit and we have the necessary pieces of information, we can continue with our disassembly procedure. Now that we're ready to begin our disassembly procedure, we need to identify with the proper tools needed for this process. First, an ordinary size set of medium sized vice grips. Second, an indexing tool, which is used to put the unit into the index jaw position. This can also be substituted with a long flathead screwdriver or a piece of flat steel. Lastly, an ordinary socket wrench with the appropriate size socket for removing the four top bolts on the top plate of this unit. Now first off, we need to use the indexing tool and index the jaws into the lower position, like so. Now this will enable you, or enable the uh, operator and maintenance person to remove the springs a little bit easier and to initiate the disassembly procedure. Second, we need to take our vice grips and remove all four of the centering springs. Clamp onto the open end of each spring with the vice grips rather tautly because these springs are a little difficult to remove. You need to pull down and out and remove the spring from the welded holder on the unit itself. This needs to be done for all four of the centering springs on each side of the unit. Lastly, now we need to take our adjustable wrench and socket, lower the unit all the way to the floor, and this is very important because the last thing holding the unit into the carrier are these four top bolts. Now, loosen all four of these bolts and take them out. Now you can take the carrier and the top plate off of the unit itself, put the carrier into a rack or onto some empty drums, and that will enable you to work solely on the unit of the automatic floor. Now that we have disassembled the unit from the carrier, we are ready to remove the floor clamping mechanisms. First off, we need to identify what the proper tools needed in this job. First, a quarter inch rod with one, one end pointed. Second, a standard ball peen hammer or carpenter's hammer. Third, a 7 8 inch wrench, open end preferably, uh, or appropriate size. And a pair of needle nose pliers or a pair of snap ring pliers depending upon which type of pins you are using in your unit. Now, we have put this unit on a hoist for our working conditions. Um, this unit can also be set on the ground or on any bench or flat surface to be worked on in your facility. Now, the first step is to take your quarter inch pin and insert the pointed end into the holding block, which sits on top of the clamping housing. Then you want to take your open end 7 8 inch wrench, and as you break that block back, Hold it with your wrench to remove the pin, because this is spring-loaded. Then remove your wrench, and the block will hang free. This also allows the housing now to hang free. It is no longer spring-loaded using the 6040 spring inside. Next, you want to raise the unit up to appropriate working height. This will 
this will allow you to work at chest level instead of having to bend over and work uh, at a lower position all the time. Now you want to take your snap ring pliers or needle nose pliers. Uh, we have cotter pins in this unit, so we'll be using the needle nose pliers. And remove all the cotter pins from this top pin here. Now that that is complete, you need to take your hammer and rod and tap out this top pin. Once this rod is removed, the 6040 spring is no longer being held by anything except your quarter inch rod, which is holding the unit in place. When you remove your rod, the housing will remain in place, it will not fall out, that needs to be removed manually. And also, the 6040 spring now should fall to the ground or it will be caught up inside the unit and you'll have to pull it out. This one fell to the ground. Now you can pick the unit up over the arms of the spider and pull it out. This is your complete clamping housing. Now that that one is removed, you need to repeat the same steps on all of the other three housings on each of the other sides of the unit. Now one note in the area of troubleshooting, this is your 6040 spring. If, if you will notice, it has two ends, one shorter and one longer. Now, if you notice when you take the spring out that both ends are the same size, this could be one of the potential problems that is causing your unit not to function properly. Uh, one end must be twice as long as the other for the spring to work properly. And if you do notice that that is a problem, it should be replaced uh, and a new one should be obtained up. Uh, now that the, that is complete and you can remove the other three clamping mechanisms, we will be ready to work on the spider. As you can see, we have now put our unit upside down on our workbench so we can remove the spider from the unit frame itself. Now, the first steps that we have to go through are to remove the lower and upper blocks. The first, we'll need the following tools for these steps. A set of two adjustable wrenches. Uh, the size does not matter. We have one large and one smaller here. Or an adjustable wrench and an Allen key, depending upon if you have Allen bolts in holding these blocks in instead of uh, standard bolts. Also, a ball peen hammer is required and uh, a quarter inch rod with a pointed end for knocking these bolts out if they're a little tight. And also, uh, a rubber or hardened plastic ended mallet for removing the upper and lower blocks. Now our first step will be to remove the four bolts in the lower block and the four bolts in the upper block. There are eight bolts total. So we'll do that now. Now we can take, take our rubber end and mallet and tap out the blocks. Now this upper block is going to present a little bit more of a problem because it is further pushed down into the frame and you will probably need to tap each side a couple of times so that it does not bind as you're taking it out. assembly and rod in here and uh, that will enable you to remove it freely from the frame. This is an upper block which is put in first as we repair the unit as we put it back together. And this is the lower block, a little bit smaller. 
now the only thing that needs to be done now is a spider needs to be pulled out in the same fashion as the upper and lower blocks now you need to grab onto each side of one of the arms and pull up now if your spider locks into place and you can't pull it up any further it is being held by the holding pawl down below so you need to push it firmly back down towards the base plate until you hear it lock and then pull it up one more time and that will release it from the pawl center and it can be slid out from there this is your spider assembly. Now, the only remaining component inside the unit frame itself are the pawls and the block and post that they sit in. As you can see, the, the pawls are spring loaded and hang towards one side, and they will always hang towards the side of this frame that is painted red, as you can see right here. Now, if that block and pawls need to be taken out for any reason, they need to be put back in so that they hang towards this red side. This is very important and needs, needs to be remembered if the pawls and block need to be taken out for any reason. If they need to be removed, the pawls are fastened by four bolts on the bottom of the base plate of this unit. Now they need uh, to be removed with an Allen wrench or Allen key, uh, loosened and taken out, and that will enable you to pull the whole block and pawls assembly out. Now in the next step, we'll take a look at our spider and one of the individual clamping housings for potential problems. Now that we have removed the spider from the frame, we can identify with the major components within the spider assembly. First, the 140-41 pin. Next, the 140-35 pin. 6038 spring, the 7011 Paul cam stop, and lastly and most importantly, the ratchet cam. This is what actually does the indexing as drums are picked up and released. Major things to look for within the spider assembly, be sure that pins and or springs are not broken or missing, and be sure if any of the components are removed from the spider, they should be put back as they are here as they were when you started. This will prevent future headaches when the unit is completely put back together uh, and you may have or may not have potential problems depending upon how it is put back together. Next, we will look at one of the individual clamping mechanisms. Major components within the clamping mechanisms are the upper jaw, the lower jaw, the 6034 spring, the two number 7018 links, and lastly, the part number 2121 small cantilever. All these components should be analyzed and checked within this unit to make sure that they don't have excessive wear, they're not broken, and or they are not missing. This will uh, enable you to troubleshoot for the major potential problems within the clamping mechanisms. Once this is done, uh, the parts, new parts can be put back in, and the clamping mechanisms and the spider assembly can be put back into the unit frame. Now that we have finished our troubleshooting, we are ready to put the unit as it's repaired properly back into the unit frame. First, take your spider assembly, Please notice on the top of the spider housing there are two slots. Those need to be matched up properly to the different size pawls. Slide your spider inside the frame, line it up with your post, then push your pawls back and start them through their appropriate holes. As the spider or as the pawls come through the spider housing, you can drop the spider down to the base plate and it will lock into place properly. Next, Take your upper block, slide it and start it into the frame, tap this down properly, line it up to the holes where the bolts need to go through.
start your bolts through, uh, all four of them. Then, as they're tightened down, you need to check the spider to make sure that it is not binding inside as this block has been tightened down. Grab each of the opposite sides of the spider. You want to pull up and push down repeatedly, approximately 10 to 15 times, to make sure that the pawls release and hold when necessary. And this, this is what you need to do. does not seem to bind on anything inside. The parts seem to float freely. It has a little bit of a free movement, so this should be fine. You can tighten your blocks down the rest of the way. You can put your top block in, start it bolts, tighten them down accordingly, and you'll be ready to put the unit right side up. We'll put it back on our hoist. We'll insert the four clamping mechanisms and then we'll be ready to test the unit and make sure it works properly. Now that we have put the unit back onto the hoist, we're ready to insert all four of the clamping mechanisms back into the unit frame. First, you need to take your clamping mechanism, slide it underneath this top plate, and over the spider arms. The unit will sit in this position. It will not fall out. It's locked pretty much into place. Now what we need to do is we need to take your 16035-1 pin and start it through this hole back here. Now you want to keep the pin, you want to insert it into the hole in the unit frame and keep it flush with the inside of the large cantilever housing right here. Next. You want to take your 6040 spring, put it up underneath this block on the large cantilever, holding the long end of the spring with two fingers, slide it underneath the block, and hold it in place with two fingers from your other hand. Next, slide your 16035-1 pin through that spring. Now your pin is started through your unit frame housing the housing of the large cantilever, and also your 6040 spring. So they're going to fall through those three parts. Next, you can take your hammer and finish the pin through the other side of the house. Into place there. Now, take your needle nose pliers and your cotter pins or snap rings, whichever you're using for your particular unit. Guide them through the hole on the other side of the pin and lock them down accordingly. Lastly, you want to take your 7 8 inch wrench and your quarter inch rod and you want to lock this holding block into place. Start with your wrench, pull this block back, then insert your pointed end of the rod into the hole on the holding block. As you remove the wrench, break your rod back and lock the block into place. Then take a small hammer. Tap that block into place, make sure it's secure, and your housing is now securely fastened with cotter pins on each side into the unit frame. Now these steps for the individual housings need to be repeated three more times for your other housings. After that is complete, your unit can be put into your fork truck adapter called the carrier and will be ready to see if the unit works properly. As you can see, we have put the unit back into the carrier, the adapter for the lift truck. We have done this by setting the unit on the ground, bringing the carrier, centering it over the top of it, putting the plate base plate back on the top, and inserting the four bolts to the top of that top plate. Um, after lifting it up, you need to make note that for access to the pawls inside the spider assembly, the spot on the unit that is painted red needs to be matched up to the rear right corner from the fork driver's perspective of the carrier. And that is important to remember when putting the unit back into the carrier. Uh, with that in mind, the last thing that needs to be done is to take your vice grips, 
clamp onto the opening end of the spring, the centering spring, pull the spring down and push it into the holder that is welded onto the unit. Like so. All four springs need to be put back on the same way. This will give you movement in each direction for centering onto uh, four drums. Lastly, before you can put the unit back into service, is to spread each of the housing with a light grade WD-40 or lubricating oil. And also, on the very top of the unit, there is, is a oil cap in between the four bolts on the top plate. This needs to be filled with uh, a light grade oil until it drips through the bottom into the clamping mechanisms. Once that is complete, your unit will be ready for many years of good service.